Earth, our planet, consists of both the living and the non-living. Being surrounded with the non-living, the plants and animals thrive with great adaptation to its environment. Today, we will examine the variety of adaptations that have evolved in animals that enable them to survive, grow, and reproduce in the diversity of environments existing on Earth. Animal sizes ranges extremely among animal organisms, from the smallest animal to the largest animal. The largest living animals are mammals. Although, even within this classification, each organism still strives for sovereignty and power. The small still remains prey. But what size imposes is proportionality and ensures balance on all organisms. What may be small may be de more dexterous and agile to give it an equal advantage against the titans. Take for example a rat. A rat's quick cognition may give it an edge against a cat, which as a predator relies on its primal instincts to hunt. Size also defines the organism's metabolism. A small organism may have a faster metabolism than that of a large organism. Take for example, between a human and an elephant. It is a given fact that an elephant will have a slower metabolism than that of humans. This is of course because of the difference between lifestyles. Eating is a fundamental process which sustains life. Producers produce for the consumers to consume. This interrelationship is what gets the world moving. Consumers are selective on what to consume depending on 1. What is needed to eat and 2. What is used to eat. Herbivores are plant eaters. They use molars to graze on food. Take a cow for example. Cows does not have sharp teeth, instead flat ones to chew on grass. Herbivores usually have a symbiotic relationship with a microorganism that helps it digest the plant cellulose. In comparison to carnivores, herbivores serve as the energy source for carnivores. A carnivore uses its canine teeth to disorient hard meat and eat the herbivore's flesh. Although, this adaptation is a double-edged sword. A diet of meat allows carnivores to do dynamic actions allowing them to live a fast-paced life. But a disadvantage to this is the need to hunt. Among the carnivores, quantity is more important than quality. A starving lion will settle for a baby deer. Omnivores are the hybridization of being a herbivore and a carnivore. A human's teeth consist of molars to chew vegetations and canines to chew on meat. Humans are the ultimate hunters, with its superior intellect amongst animals to create weapons. Humans have stood above the food chain. Organisms have to maintain balance by reacting to its external environment. These reactions induce the driving force to evolve specific parts for responding to such changes. These responses are what drive animals to be different from one another even among the same species. Conforming is the parallel response to, of the internal environment to the external environment. 
a frog is a thermal conformer. If you put a frog on a pan with tap water and let it stay there while slowly heating the water, the frog will progressively conform to the change in temperature until there would come a point that the frog will sense the danger of the high temperature and eventually jumps out of the pan. This is in comparison to regulators. Regulators respond to its external environment with a broad range of changes. These processes require the use of energy to achieve balance. Common regulators include warm-blooded species and conformers as cold-blooded species. This is usually the case, but there are cases that a species may be a conformer at one aspect of its environment and a regulator on another. The concept of conformity and regulation is not to be generalized on organ on organisms but to classify how an organism responds to its environment. Homeostasis is from the Greek words homeo and stasis which means standing still. In layman's term, this is the achievement of balance between the external and internal environments. A human body needs to maintain an internal temperature inside its body of about 37 degrees Celsius. This is to ensure that the physiological processes of the body are optimally met. But an increase or decrease in internal temperature will definitely prove fatal as to the shutting down of some processes of the human body. The mechanism of homeostasis involves negative feedback. This feedback mechanism restores the system to its set point with the use of its components, the receptor, integrator, and effector. The external environment is, is consistently changing in temperature from a hot hallway to an air-conditioned room. The human body will have to regulate its internal temperature by releasing or taking in heat. The body will sense the change in temperature of your the change in temperature will stimulate the nerves and will, and will deliver the information to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus sends out a response to accommodate the decrease in temperature by spontaneously contracting the muscles, producing body heat which warms out the body. Food taken in by an organism is composed of an organic component. This is in the form of nutrients and biomolecules such as carbohydrates, protein, and lipids. In order to break down and extract nutrients, the body needs to undergo a process called aerobic respiration. Aerobic, from the word aero, means air, and such is the use of oxygen. Terrestrial animals have no problem in the acquisition of oxygen, since this is abundant in the atmosphere. M mammals store it in their lungs by allowing diffusion of oxygen into the lungs. Amphibians use both the tracheal respiration and the vascularized skin respiration. In aquatic animals, it is a different story. They must take in oxygen from the water in some way. Mammalian life forms in the sea are an exemption. Whales and dolphins resurface to acquire oxygen from the air. Remember that oxygen diffuses to the surface of the water and sinks to the bottom. But there is a limit to where oxygen can sink, and so at the bottom of the sea, there is scarcity of oxygen, which actually favors decomposition. Large aquatic animals make use of their gills to allow oxygen from the water to diffuse. Oxygen uptake is directly related to size. A large portion of the body is made up of water. Water is essential to biochemical processes in the body, including metabolism, digestion, and filtration. 
Water is expulsed from the body through sweating, peeing, taking a dump, or exhaling moist air. An organism must always maintain its water balance with the environment, depending to several factors. Hypoosmotic organisms that live in fresh water have more water inside their body in comparison to hyperosmotic organisms that live in saltwater environments. And of course, there are the isoosmotic organisms that maintain balance in the levels of water both inside and outside the environment. Water also presents significance with regards to thermal conductivity. Due to the high specific heat of water, it is usually used by animals to hydrate themselves and to regulate body heat. Thermoregulation is the process of maintaining the organism's body temperature within bounds. This is important of course in regulating the equilibrium of the internal and external environment. Poikilothermic animals have varying body temperatures and homeotherms on the other hand have the similar body temperature. Both undergo regulation through different ways. Homeotherms regulate their body temperatures by metabolic processes. Some birds and mammals use their glucose in the body to regulate body heat. For homeotherms, the thermal neutral zone is the zone where a range of environmental temperatures presents a situation where metabolism of the organism is minimal. Since some homeotherms use oxygen to regulate body heat, their basal metabolic rate is typically measured by their oxygen consumption. Although homeothermic animals are efficient in varying temperatures, the cost of these processes require energy to be consumed. A higher metabolic rate and the heat they lose need to be consistently replaced by producing heat. The difference of poikilothermic animals from homeothermic animals is that they regulate body heat by their behavioral mechanisms. Movements or mobility and hyperactivities of such animals are enough to produce and maintain body heat. Swimming, for example, a man in a cold water pool makes use of the heat produced by his muscles by consistently moving. Besides poikilothermy and homeothermy, ectothermy and endothermy also classifies how animals adapted to their environment. Ecto means to release and endo is to absorb, meaning Heat is released in ectothermic organisms that are usually warm-blooded and endothermic animals are cold-blooded since cold blood absorbs heat. A turtle needs the sun to digest its food. Without the sun's ultraviolet and heat, the turtle will be indigested and it will potentially die. On the other hand, the process of digestion for a dog will be producing heat, and that heat produced will be used for energy or is released by the body. Heteroterms, on the other hand, manifest both the characteristics of being an ectotherm and an endoderm. Heterothermic animals like the bear, in order to compensate to its ever-changing environment, needs to be both able to prevent the release of heat or quicken the release of heat. Whenever winter strikes, in order to stay warm, a bear accumulates more body fat and, grow its, and grows its fur, thicker, to insulate the body from the chills of winter, and eventually undergoes hibernation to adapt for the scarcity of food and water. Some animals, due to really sensitive tolerance to heat, undergo extreme means to compensate for the changes in temperature of the environment. One is supercooling. This is the process where an organism's body fluids fall below its freezing point but does not freeze. This is observed in arctic fishes that needs to lower their body temperature lower than 0 degrees Celsius to stay comfortable or to continue on with their metabolism. Some animals utilize countercurrent heat exchange to conserve heat in a cold environment. 
purposes in order to traverse the cold arctic regions of the world need to insulate itself with blubber to keep warm blubber is a really thick layer of fat and is usually easily oxidized than the normal fat accumulation of blubber in the flippers and flukes act like a glove and a bonnet in a cold room Habitat of the animal is the other term for its home. Its habitat is not randomly selected. Instead, it is selected for its capability to provide a shelter and resources for the animal. This process of selecting a habitat is called habitat selection. For a species to persist in location, it must be optimal for the organism's growth and survival. The habitat must present various opportunities for an organism to strive to survive. Abiotic factors in the environment also has its role in the physical and chemical features of environment such as aging or senescence, pH or temperature or salinity. From its habitat, where it grows, also spawns an organism's hidden capability to evolve. Various genera presents various different differences. For example, a husky would have thicker fur than that of a regular dog in the tropics. Fishes in salt water tend to have drier meat than that of freshwater fishes. They also grow bigger in salt water because of the intense competition. Such is also the case in some reptilian genera like alligators or turtles.